What's going on, fellas? Welcome to episode 2 of Rope to Top 1000, where we track our progress through competitive season 7. As you can tell from it not even being 24 hours, we've already dropped a thousand spots without playing a game. We gotta get in there and we gotta win some games so we can make sure we go up in the leaderboard. However, I do have a special surprise as we did add someone big to the team today. As we head in the edit up lineup screen, you might have snuck a quick peek at him. And that is right, it is team of the year Matthew Kitchock. I've been searching for this card actually for the past couple days and I have not been able to find him slash not been able to get him through a trade offer. So just really quick shout out to ZachyJ18 as I played him, asked him if I could use his Kachuk, send him 300k, he said yes, great guy, and with that being said, let's get into the first game. Alright 6, so we're going up against I Make You Doo Doo, Flyers jersey, looks pretty cool, oh, what's he doing, oh, oh, shit. Okay, actually it looks like we're going up against J-Law Jr. Wee Woo, it's a pretty funny team name, let's see who his best player is. Oh, shit. Maybe a third time's the try, Sensible Elms. Same gamer tag, let's see. Come on, he's a Toronto fan. Let's go. Any chance? Sweet, let's go. What's his best player? Oh, oh, he, oh, he faked me out, damn it. What we do here is go back, 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 back. So the real first opponent is Rawls Titan, as he is a RAG fan, but yet he's rocking the sweet vintage, or I guess 2006 cap jerseys. Let's see what we can do with him. So really quick, we see the sneak peek of his goalie record, and at that point I actually shit my pants. Starting off the game pretty quick here, come out with a huge diving poke check against him early in the first. Up the ice, we're taking Matt Duchesne, dropping it to Winberg, should have toe dragged, but Shot it short side and Obi made the stop. We're dropping it to Dry Saddle. Dry Saddle's ringing it off the post and damn, it's a close one. Okay, so now we're going up with Morgan Riley as we do the dump in. He kind of turns it over here. We're able to try to do it behind the back pass and Dry Saddle hits the damn post again. This is too close. Next clip, he burns our D and goes forehand back in, but Jake Allen comes up huge. So, this is the first chess match I've had for a while on Hut, as we can both see that all of the stats are low and close, as shots are only 5-3, to three. everything's just super tight. So let's see how the second pans out. About halfway through the second, we have a defensive zone faceoff that we need to win, but he fakes us out, he wins it. Gives it over to his defenseman, and Dougie Gilmore just tips it right home. No chance for the goaltender, Allen. With that being said, he's up one nothing. Next, we have number four trying to go up the ice. Zigzagging, going through, trying to snipe that short side. Shoot shot far side. There was a back out, we recover. We try to pass it across, stick lift, and shoot far side. Matthew Kachuk scores his first goal on the team to tie it up at 1-1. I forgot to grab the stats of them in a second. Either way, he beats our defender to the puck here, which allows him to get an easy ass goal because our defender's out of position. Back where we started, down by one. Only a couple minutes later, his player is cutting down the middle and cuts to the inside for a fantastic scoring opportunity, but Jake Allen says no. Off of that face off, we have Matthews on the draw who's able to win it, but Ellis gets at the corner and turns it over. He starts to cycle on us from Kane over to Sagan. He should have scored that one timer, but he didn't. We have one more chance to get it out. We fail, he sends it down low, and just right away taps it over for an easy goal. Goalie couldn't have stopped that. Feeling the momentum will get away from us, so we're gonna call a timeout here, down 3-1, see if it can change the tide. Only 11 minutes to go in the third, and we need to make a stop, so we come out with the goalie, and Jake Allen makes the huge diving poke check save again. Nearing only eight minutes left, he's entering our zone. We're able to throw it out. Oh, no, intercepted by Bobby Hall or whatever the one that doesn't have a bucket is, and he's able to snipe us. Too easy for him. Next shift, he's coming back down. Gets to twirl around us with Kessel and sends it over for the one-timer on an absolutely beautiful top-class goal. And at this point, we're just getting wrecked five to two. I know it's hard to believe that I didn't score three goals in 12 seconds, but yeah, he got the W. He deserved it in the third period. I felt like, like I said, it was a chess match throughout the first and second, but as soon as we hit the third, he just turned it up. We only lost 63 points from this, which I am, I'll take every day. I did talk to him after, and he was telling me that he 
was nervous in the first and second just like me and he just thought he got lucky in the third and that just made me laugh because every single time I get beat by someone I just think they're this sweaty no life try hard but hell he was just a normal guy that was good at video games on to game two what we do here is go back 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 Alrighty then, game two, we are up against the Russians. Gamer tag is pro with a bow, two, three, one. And let's get right into it. So this guy gives us a nice early power play to hopefully establish momentum as we have Matthews on the draw. Matthews pushes, wins it. Barry looks, looks, doesn't like what he sees, cuts in, goes and roops it right over Butitsky's shoulder to give us a one nothing lead. Can't get any closer in the first minute than that. Next up, we have him cutting down the wing. Not too far after, cutting down, curling, giving it to Shea Weber, who just wires one right into the back of the net, and we're tied 1-1. We get an offensive zone draw that we push back, give to Riley, and it, I mean, I don't think you can get any more cheesier than that. I mean, come on, Boopitsky, step your game up. Well, it's a close game in the shots and goal department, other than that, he's beating me in everything. He's beating me in time on attack, passing, I'm beating him in power plays, that's how I have two of my goals. I am beating him in face-offs, and with that being said, let's get into the second. Right away in the second, he has a neutral zone turnover, which Matthew Kachuk pounces on, goes down, tries to score, but he does draw a penalty, which is just as good in my opinion. Here we go, Matthews, what you're going to do, push, Panera instead of sniping it, gets it poked away for the shot from the point, and Matthews picks up the garbage make it a 3-1 lead. Just for warning, you're about to see some sloppy ass hut. So, he's trying to gain his own entry, throws it right back to Amante, who personally scores a goal that I don't think he should have scored, but hell, I probably screened Allen as usual. Now we have some sloppy D zone play, as we try to throw it right in front of our net. Jake Allen saves us once, Winberg instead of getting it out again, starts to play full retard, and I'm sure you can guess what happens from here. Easy. Cross cruiser. We're tied. Now we have the nail in the coffin, which he shoots their screens for a short side, makes it four to three with 59 seconds left. It's, uh, it's terrible. However, we do have one more chance. Leon Drysdale comes up, stride deeks once, tries to use the screen, and gets the shot blocked. Which, damn. We blew a 3-1 to one lead again. I'm having flashbacks. Yeah, so this is going to be a lot more costly of a loss than the first one, as this time we do lose 116 points. That's putting us down to 1,000 even in points not ranked. And we move all the way back to 2,271. We're going to have to have a big game to get us back to even. Before we pull out our secret weapon, I did want to show you the end game screen for that game. As you can tell, I really did turn it up in the second and third period, beating him in shots, beating him in time on attack, beating him in almost everything, except, obviously, the scoreboard, where it fucking counts. I did mention a secret weapon, and it's going to be swapping out Jake Allen for none other than the man, the myth, the legend, Andre Vasilevsky. So, we'll see how he does for us in this game. What we do here is go back, 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 back. Yeah, let's see if we can win our last game of the day. It looks like it's against Chaseo, and his best player looks to be Brad Richards. Awesome. Let's get into it. Starting us off at the bottom half of the first, we cut in with Barry, pull back, and snipe it short side, as that puts us up 1-0. Coming right back down with Barry before the first is over, we come by, shoot it, and we get that almost last minute cheese with Barry, as that's a very fluky goal. Only with 8 seconds left, don't even think he's going to be able to shoot it as he loses the puck here, McDavid tries to get it out, he makes an incredible keep in, comes in, re big rebound, and Vasilevsky almost gets it, but he ends up scoring with .9 seconds. Let's look at the first intermission stats. Everything is very close. Nothing we really need to discuss here. Let's get into the second. Here we're using Pniff to try to keep him to the outside as he cuts in and cuts back outside. Pniff tries to hold it. Larkin intercepts to Dry Saddle. We got numbers. Dry Saddle to Larkin. Larkin to McDavid. And Dry Saddle just barely misses the tic tac toe by hitting the outside of the net. So Duchesne gets the puck here. 
looks to Nanger on that size big. Country would say Spinorama is around two people and almost tucks it over the shoulder on Pecorine. Here we're looking at the second intermission stats. As you can see, I've started to pull away from the game, even though it is still the same score. I've now nearly tripled his time on attack. I have slightly better passing than him. Killing him in face-offs. Oh, no, I take that back. Doesn't matter though, let's get into the third. Starting off with a defensive recovery by Vlasic Pickle. As he throws it up, Hamilton is so kind to stop it from McDavid. McDavid on breakaway, but he comes out as aggressive goalie and McDavid chokes. No worries, we throw it back. And to Barry, as Barry gets the hat trick. Now we have Panarin who toe drags, windmills, comes back, and shoots low glove for a sweet breakaway goal. Terrible play at the blue line by us, leads to a breakaway for him as we pull Page off his book and do an aggressive goalie. Uh oh, the goalie's right there. Oh, what just happened? Plastic Pickle just saved the day as he puts us on the penalty kill. You could tell it wasn't that guy's best day as we picked up the W without really any problems and it's nice to see that we got way more than 100 points, 117 points for beating someone that didn't seem to have as much of a skill level as us, which then pushes us back past 2000. Now taking a look at the end of the game screen that we can see, we did end up pulling away having more than 10 shots than him, obviously in goals. Time on attack, we did end up tripling it. Passing, he ended up having more than us, but I'm guessing that's because he didn't have the puck as much. And here are the three stars. We have Barry, Panarin, and Mac Daddy. What we do here is go back, 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 back. So episode two wasn't that good as we went one and two, making our overall record three and three, which is even. It's not positive like it was before, but it certainly isn't negative either, so I'll take it. As far as our points totals go, we started off the day with 1,180, now we have 1,117. That's only an 83 point difference. 63 of those points came in that first loss today, so that sucks, but it's not that big of a deficit to climb back out of. Hopefully next episode we can break the 1,500 barrier, and if that happens, it's gonna be awesome. So I'll see you in the next episode.